us today on this uh, Monday the 23rd. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you're ready to learn some math today. we got a lot to do. So let's go ahead and get started. Here's your schedule for the week now. I'm not going to promise we'll stick to this, but this is pretty much the basic idea of what we're going to do. On Monday today, we're going to finish lesson 10.5 and also work on some homework. Tomorrow we're going to do lesson 10.6. Now it's a lot of notes tomorrow, so we're doing notes only tomorrow. On Wednesday, we're going to have um, homework only. Um, and then on Thursday, we're going to have a quiz. And also we're going to start working on a review for your test after the spring break. Now you're saying, well, Mr. Earhart, if we review before spring break, we're going to forget everything. Why well, is we're going to start the review? When you come back, we'll do some more review, so we're, we're totally good. I won't um, make a mistake there. We're okay. All right. So that's kind of the schedule for the week. Friday, there's no school. Okay, we're going to have a quiz on Thursday, like I just said, okay? Um, go ahead and turn your homework in from page 566. Now, look, some of you turned it in already. That's fine. A lot of you turned it in on Friday, but those that did not, please put your name on it now and turn it in. I'm amazed how we're into March 23rd, and I'm still getting papers with no names, plus that amazes me because I remind you every day, so please make sure your name is on it, and please make sure that you turn that in. Incomplete. Okay, the only thing I have income for is Anna's quiz. Anna, I will give you, I know it's quite a few days, and you pre-contacted me about that, and, and that's all, that's fine. I'd like you to take the quiz by Thursday, if at all possible. If you can't swing that, then I understand, but I'd like you to take the quiz by Thursday. That's the only incomplete that I have. Now, there were other, there were other incompletes up here, guys, but remember, like I told you, if you don't get those turned in by last Friday, they become permanent zeros, and it's now too late to turn those in, okay? All right, uh, moving on. If you miss a day of class, please go to this website, type in the date that you missed. Asia, you're new to the class. You type in the date that you missed, okay? And when you do that, up will pop the announcement video, like the one you're watching now, and it will tell you what to do. Um, Asia students, all you guys, when you come to class, you're doing what we're doing, even if you've been absent. If we're taking a quiz, you're taking a quiz. If we're taking a test, you're taking a test. You've got to stay caught up in this class, okay? All right. Today, we're going to take notes for a little bit. No cheering allowed. I know you're excited about that, and we're going to work on homework today. All right. Notes and homework. Now, the video today is only 16 minutes long. All right. In this video, we will be looking at sine and cosine functions a little more. We will be using these two trig functions to solve for missing parts of triangle. So listen, in the past, what you were doing is you were finding the sine and cosine of angles. Well, now we're going to do today what you guys learned to do last week with your tangents. Okay? And that is, you learned how to take your tangent ratio and find missing sides of right triangles. We're going to do that today with sine and cosine. Some of you, man, there were three of you that nailed the quiz. I was so proud of you. I actually cried a little bit. Okay, that's not true, but I was really excited. Others of you, man, I don't know if you, I don't know, I don't want to say you didn't study, but I mean, we've been over this. We've taken a day off and reviewed the first three lessons. Man, you're going to take out of this class what you put into it, okay? And I'm not the best teacher in the world, but I'm really breaking this stuff down and trying to explain it well, okay? All right, um, let's continue on. So that's what we're going to do today for your notes. Here's your homework. Please copy this down. Page 567, 25 through 32. Not a lot of problems, but they are going to take you a while to do. Okay, moving on. Now, the instructional video for today is called Lesson 10.5 Part 2. And I actually forgot uh, Miss Chambers to put on here where you start the video. Let me pause this and look that up. I'm pretty sure you started at 2100. But let me check and make sure really quick. Yes, that is correct. So you're fast forwarding a large portion of this video because um, 
in the first part of the video, I went over a quiz the students took last year, okay? Not this year, so start the video at 21 minutes, okay? All right. The homework help video is Lesson 10.5, Homework Part 2. Lesson 10.5, Homework Part 2. That's the homework help video. And by the way, I think Ms. Chambers has told me that you guys don't play that a lot in class. That's totally um, y'all's choice, but I would encourage you to not hesitate to play this video if you need to. Because if you're doing your listen, if you're doing it's no different than going to a free throw line and shooting the ball with two hands behind your head and practicing the wrong way, you're never going to get any better. It's the same thing with math. If you're not practicing the right way, you're not going to get any better. So if you're doing the problems wrong, and that's how you're practicing them, what good does that do? So make sure you're doing your homework correctly. Now go ahead and get out your quizzes, and let's go over these. Anyone who did not take the quiz is more than welcome to listen to this going over of the quiz right now. They're going to take a different quiz, so Anna, feel free to stay in the room. Listen to this. Take notes on this. You're going to take a different quiz, okay? All right, here we go. Now, first of all, let me slide this down, okay? Let's look at... Let's look at these first three problems. Give me some space up here. Now, guys, we learned for a 30, 60, 90 triangle that the shorter leg equals half of the hypotenuse. We learned the hypotenuse equals twice the shorter leg. And we learned, let's see what, that the longer leg equals um, the shorter leg times the square root of three. I mean, that, that you had to learn those. There's no other way to do it, guys. Just like in English, you've got to memorize stuff in science and history. You just got to memorize those. In the 45, 45, 90 triangles, you learn that the legs equal the legs. And the hypotenuse is um, the leg times the square root of two and you learned that a leg equals the hypotenuse divided by the square root of two. And you had to learn these. I can't do this for you, okay? One of you wrote me a note in the quiz and said, I forgot to form this and I felt bad for you, but I can't help that, okay? All right, now, let's take a look at our first problem here, all right? I'm gonna enlarge these, make them a little bigger, and then, um, Go from there. Just hold on one second here so we can see them. All right, let's take a look at problem number one here. Now, notice first of all, we have 45 degrees here and 90 here. So that tells us the other angle has to be 45. So we do have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Now, listen, when that happens, label your sides. You know this is a leg. You know this is a leg. Here's the right angle. It's pointing directly to the hypotenuse. So you know this side is the hypotenuse. Now I've given you one of the legs. One of the legs equals seven. Now look up here at your formulas. In a 45, 45, 90 triangle, you know the legs are congruent. So if one leg is seven, then X equals what? Seven, it's a leg. Now, if one of your legs is seven, or both of your legs, well, the hypotenuse is Y. So what is your hypotenuse going to be? We'll look up here at your formulas. The hypotenuse equals your leg times the square root of two. So take your leg, which is seven, and multiply it times the square root of two. If you left your answer like that, booyah, no problem. If you typed into your calculator and got out decimal, no problem. I don't care, but these are the two answers, okay? 45, 45, 90 triangles. You guys have got to know this information, okay? All right, let's continue on. Okay, students, I'm back. My computer likes to crash. Sometimes it just did that. All right, now let's take a look at number two. All right, here we go. Now notice I have 90 degrees here. 30 degrees here, so this other angle over here must be 60. So I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. What is the first thing you do? Label your sides. So go to your right angle, go straight across. This is your hypotenuse. 
go to your smallest angle 30 go straight across this is your shorter leg um, so your last side has to be your longer leg and now let's get to work isn't that easy how many of you cannot find a right angle and go straight across and put the letter H how many of you cannot find the number 30 the angle 30 degrees and go straight across and put the letters SL this is how I've taught you over and over and over on the videos okay all right now um, we're looking first of all let's see which what do we know we know the shorter leg is eight so how would I find the hypotenuse well look right here the hypotenuse is always twice as big as the shorter leg so there you go if the shorter leg is eight multiply it by two the hypotenuse has to be 16 so x equals 16 that's so easy how about the longer leg well it says right here the longer leg is shorter leg times the square root of three well my shorter leg is eight right so eight times the square root of three so y equals eight square root of three and if you type that in a god decimal i have no problem with that that's totally up to you okay so there we go there are the answers number two when i go over this i mean really guys it should be pretty simple all right it's not that difficult all right, let's take a look now at our last problem here. Number three, problem number three. All right, here we go. Now, again, we have a 30, <coughs> 60, 90 triangle. There we go. So go to your right angle, go straight across, label this your hypotenuse. Go to 30, go straight across, label this your shorter leg. Go to 60, go straight across your longer leg. Now they've given us the hypotenuse. Okay, no big deal. We know that the shorter leg right here is always half the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse divided by two, or another way to write that is just one half times the hypotenuse. However you want to write it, okay? But the shorter leg is always half the length of the hypotenuse. What's the length of the hypotenuse? 20. So what's the shorter leg going to be? 10. That's it. So x equals 10. And again, I love y'all. I'm here to help you. But, I mean, that was pretty discouraged. Y'all missed this, okay? You've got to learn these formulas. And this stuff will be on the ACT or SAT test, by the way. I can just about guarantee that I have at least one of these on the test. Dealing with 30, 60, 90, or 45, 45, 90 triangles. Okay, now, the longer leg. Well, according to this up here, the longer leg is always the shorter leg times the square root of 3. Shorter leg times the square root of 3. So, if I know the shorter leg is 10, which I just showed that to you, 10, then you take the shorter leg times the square root of 3. The longer leg is the shorter leg times the square root of 3. So, 10 square root of 3. That would be your longer leg, which is y. And there we go. Now, you could leave your answer like this or type it in your calculator and have a decimal. I really don't care. Okay. All right. Now, let's continue on and uh, take a look at the rest of the problems on the quiz here. I hope you're listening. I hope you're paying attention. And here goes my computer again crashing. Um, I'm going to uh, turn the microphone off and yell something here. Just kidding. I'm joking. All right. All right, I am back. I'm expecting much better um, work from my computer. I picked it up and threw it down the middle of the road, drove over it, and now it should work fine. That usually fixes things like this. All right, now on numbers four and five and six and seven, would you please look at these two S words? Solve. Simplify. If you can learn the difference between those two, then you're going to be fine. And I'm going to explain it really well right now. Solve means to simply type into your calculator. Now, I'm not trying to treat you, you know, make you be lazy. If you can do the square root of 25 in your head and put down 5, that's fine. But one of you put this for the square root of 25. You put the square root of 5. Now, I'm not making fun. That's a very common mistake. So, Mr. Arrow, why are you saying something then? I'm saying it to point out to you that maybe when you say the word solve, just to take no chances at all, maybe you guys should just type into your calculator. It's up to you. I don't care. But either do it in your head or type into the calculator, one of the two. So, if you type this into your calculator, you get a 5. If you type this into your calculator, which I'm not sure I'm doing that right now, 
I don't have the answer key with me. You get 7.87, so I'm going to put 7.9. You can round her if you want to. Never again should any of you miss these. If you have a calculator with you, if you have a calculator with you, you should never miss the solving radicals. Now, simplifying radicals is where you take your list of perfect squares, and I've taught you this in the videos, 2 times 2, 3 times 3, 4 times 4, 5 times 5, 6 times 6, 7 times 7, 8 times 8, 9 times 9, 10 times 10, and there are more of these, but usually for this class, this is sufficient. Now we're going to break down the square root of 44. Simplify means don't type into your calculator. It means use your perfect squares. Do any of these perfect squares go into 44? Yes, 4 does. So 44 becomes what? How many times does 4 go into 44? 11 times. So instead of putting 44, you put 4 times 11. That's pretty obvious. Now, which one of these two numbers do you know the square root of? You do not know the square root of 11, but you do know the square root of 4. So cross this off and put a 2 on the outside. Now, Mr. Erard, how do you know when you're finished? You know that you're finished when none of your perfect squares down here will go evenly into this number, and none of these perfect squares go into 11 evenly, so you know you're done. Now, 112. Do any of these numbers go into 112 evenly? Well, 4 does. So I'm going to put this. 4 goes, and how do I know that? Well, look, guys, get your calculators out. Don't be lazy. Work hard and type 112 divided by this number divided by this number. Just start dividing these numbers into 112 until you find one that goes in evenly. And if none of them do, then you're done. Just circle that, and you're done. 4 goes into 112. 28 times. Okay, so 4 times 28. Now, do you know the square root of 28? No, you do not. But do you know the square root of 4? Yes. So cross out the 4 and put a 2 on the outside. However, you're not done because you can divide the, another perfect square into 28. It's 4 again. So now you take your 28 and you put 4 times 7. You keep doing this until there's no numbers left down here that will go evenly into your radicand. Radicand is the number inside the radical. Okay, now, do we know the square root of 7? No, but we know the square root of 4. Cross this off, put a 2 on the outside, multiply these numbers, and you have 4 square root of 7. Now you're finished, because no number in your perfect squares list down here goes into 7 evenly. So you're finished. Okay, now, I want to show you something else. Some of you might have said, Mr. Arrow, I did that a little faster. You, you could have done it faster, and that's totally fine, okay? Um, I understand that, totally. And f for those who might be confused, watch this. Instead of using 4 into 112 and then 4 into 28, you could have started off with 16 right off the bat and said, okay, 16 times 7 equals 112. Because that's true. It's not 16 down here on your perfect squares list. Sure it is. So this is a little faster. If you start with the bigger numbers and work your way down, it might save you some time. Now, 16 times 7 is 112. Do we know the square root of 7? No, but we do know the square root of 16. Crossed off, put a 4 on the outside. So you're left with 4 square root of 7. The exact same answer. Alright. Okay, lastly, we're looking at the tangent of angle A. The tangent of angle A. Now, watch this carefully. Alright. Uh, yippee, here we go again. Okay, students, I'm back. Um, if you're wondering why I don't buy a new computer, to be honest with you, it does this once in a blue moon. Tonight, it's done it on other videos, done a lot, I'm not sure why. And um, I could probably sell one of my kids on eBay, make some money and buy a computer, but then the problem is they probably return them, return my kids. Just kidding. All right, let's get this done. So here we go. Um, find the tangent of angle A. Now, I think I told you guys to call this angle up here angle A. Okay, so we're going to find the tangent of this angle. So in the videos, I've taught you what to do. Once you circle the angle you're dealing with, you label all of your sides. This is my hypotenuse. This is my opposite. So the only thing left is adjacent. That goes right here, adjacent. Now, tangent of A is what? Tangent of angle A is opposite over adjacent. Toa, T-O-A. Well, the opposite side would be 
adjacent side would be 9. So the tangent of angle A is 12 nines. Now, if you put, some of you put 1.3, which is the same thing. I gave you credit for that. Some of you left the 12 nines, no problem. The best answer is 4 thirds. You really should get used to leaving your tangent, cosine, and sine answers in fraction form, improper fractions, and reduced. But I gave you credit for all those, okay? So either way is fine on those. All right. Okay. Well, guys, that's it for today as in terms of your intro video. Have a great day. Contact me if you have any questions. Go ahead and start now. Lesson um, uh, 10.5, part 2. It's not very long, but listen well. Pause it when you need to. Take really good notes, okay? And then start your homework. Work hard, Miss Chambers. Like I've been saying, um, if you want the if you want the homework, do it at the end of the period. It's fine with me. Um, I'm just going to say this. If anyone's not working, just let me know. They can turn it at the end of the period with a low grade. I'll email their parents. You know, whatever. Um, I am here to do whatever we need to do to get these um, students to work hard in class. Okay? Contact me if you have any questions.